Hey everybody, wow, it has been an awful long time since I have actually done a Facebook Live. I think three months maybe, but brilliant. I'm so happy to be back. So for the first video, what I wanted to do was to talk about a number of reasons as to why coaching programs fail. And I think this will be useful. These are really common mistakes. I see these mistakes all of the time. When I start working with clients, these are the common things that come up for them. So I thought I would share them with you because you might have something similar playing out in your own programs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the first reason that coaching programs fail today and then I'm going to do another four videos on the other four topics and reasons as to why those coaching programs are failing because it's quite a lot of content and I don't want to overwhelm you. Well it's great to be back as I said and it's lovely to actually share some knowledge, some insight and some expertise with you. So I wanted to as I said, do this step by step, layer upon top of layer on top of layer. Now, you may be listening to me and thinking that actually that makes a lot of sense, Wendy. That's exactly what is playing out for me. What I'm going to be doing on the 20th is I'm going to be hosting a deep dive immersion into how you can create profitable coaching programs. I'll pop the link below so make sure that you join that event. If you feel that over the next five days something hits a point and you think actually I need to know more about that, that's where you need to be. You need to be on that deep dive immersion. Okay so the first reason that a coaching program will fail is that it's not focused on results. It's not focused on helping the client to achieve results. Now I know when we're training, we're often told that the clients have all the answers, but I don't think that is necessarily true. And I also think it is a little bit cruel to keep people in a place of significant pain when they don't actually have the answers. So I take more of a leadership role, my clients take more of a leadership role. They use coaching as a tool within what they're teaching their clients. So number one, absolutely, is that their offer is vanilla. It isn't results focused. And there are quite a few problems that can occur when this happens. It makes business really, really difficult. It makes enrolling clients really difficult because they don't know what they are buying into. It also makes programs really challenging to deliver because they've got no focus. So what ends up happening is a lot of time is wasted by the consultant, by the coach, because they're having to deal with what's been presented in the room each week without having a plan to follow. It reminds me of a uh, counseling, counseling session that you'll go to and you, you go in and you present the challenges and the um, counsellor will sort of nudge you in a, a direction. They don't take much of a... Uh, uh, a leadership role, which is fair enough, that's not what they are employed to do. So they, you go to each session, but you ne don't necessarily get that much out of it because there's no direction. You go into the session the week later and then you still feel as if you're in the, the same spot that you were the week before or even when you first started. So what I'm trying to um, say is that when you are able to work towards results with your clients, it makes it much easier, not just for you, but it also makes it easier for them as well, because they can understand the value of what it is that they are buying. So not working towards clients' results and achieving success creates a whole load of other problems not just in the delivery of working one-to-one -one or in group sessions with your clients, but it impacts on the marketing and the sales process as well. 
So the coaching program may not ever get off the ground because it's too vanilla. There's no promise. There's no direction. It's not clear what the individual is actually buying into. I'm just looking at my notes, sorry, if you're wondering what I'm looking down at. Yeah, the focus is just too much on the client having the answers. So there's a really easy way to fix this. And I know for a lot of people, this will go against the grain because as I mentioned earlier, in our training, we are taught to be led by the client. The client has all the answers. And I know people are fearful, and they don't need to be, they are fearful of making a promise to somebody. So if I think of a promise that I have I've did last year was that you'd become an Amazon number one bestseller. So I have to work towards, with the client, towards that goal. I am much responsible as they are responsible. And the ickiness comes when people believe that the power is in the um, client's control, that if they don't take the action, they're not going to get the results. Well, of course, that's true. If they don't take the action, they're not going to get the results. Absolutely. So you want people who are highly motivated and engaged and ready to do the work. Um, but I believe it's a bit of a cop-out for us to say, well, it's just down to the client whether they decide to do the work or not. I think we have more of a responsibility to craft programs in a way that helps them to gain confidence, to get insight, to get clarity, to take inspired action, to do the work. Of course, this is all in part of your um, onboarding process, your unrolling process, is to find out how motivated that individual is to work with you. But I do think it's a bit of a cop-out when um, people stand back and say, well, I can't um, promise something because they might not do it. Um, it just in my mind, it feels like you're setting yourself up to fail, but you're also setting the client up to fail as well because you're giving them too much power and control. I always think about my clients as if they invest in me, I invest in them. They're investing in me financially to get a problem solved, but I'm also investing my time and energy in them to make sure that I can, in the best way possible, make sure that they achieve the results. So how can you fix this? How can you fix not um, delivering on results? It's actually really easy. <laughs> Let's face it, nothing is life been easy. But the first thing you need to do is to get crystal clear on the outcome the clients wants. And this isn't just one individual client. This is a group of people who all have a similar shared experience. And you want to get crystal clear on what the actual group of people want to achieve. What's the ultimate result it is that they want to achieve. You want to create that promise that is going to lead, lead them to achieve that outcome. That's where the value is. It's not in wishy-washy, vanilla offers that people just don't understand or get, words are used that are too um, vague, like um, confidence, self-esteem, it, me it means nothing, it has to have context, confidence to do what, to raise your self-esteem to do what, what do people want. Um, so recently I was working with a um, client whose initial offer was focused on relationship coaching. But that was just one tiny aspect of what it is that she did. But, you know, relationship coaching is a common um, term. It doesn't say to me what actually the person does. Relationship, relationship with who? My cat, my dog. Um work, my partner, it's it's too broad. Because she's so much she was so much more than that. Basically the essence for her was about helping women to make a decision whether they wanted to stay in their relationship or not. That's a big difference and a very different program to maybe something that a relationship coach would create. So the focus of her program 
how to lead people on a journey to feel confident to be able to make the decision to leave their partner or not, to stay with them or to go, to have the confidence to do that. So each, each week, her clients are taken on a specific journey because they have to do a step by step by step. You can't, um, it's a bit like what I do with the business coaching is, you know, you have to find out what you're about first before you do anything. Who are you? What do you want the business to give you? You have to find out a whole load of things before you can move on to the next step. You have to create your message. You can't do sales first and then create your message. So there are, there is always a process and a step-by-step -step journey that people go through. What we do as experts is we mold ourselves around that individual, but we take them through a process that is uniquely designed to them because you have got that one-to-one -one personal interaction with them. So each step of her program leads on to the natural next step. If there's any resistance that comes up, if there's homework that hasn't been done, she can then hold that person accountable and work through those blocks with them. So she absolutely has their back, 100%, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. So to help someone to make a decision, you have to lead. You have to lead with the program. You have to use not just coaching skills, but a variety of different skills it is that you have in your toolkit. So, as I said, her program takes people through, step by step, a clear process, and the outcome, the promises that they will feel empowered enough to be able to make a decision whether they want to stay or go. And the nice thing about that is that you can have another program off the back of it that supports either, ones, either one of those decisions. And there's a lot of work that you need to go through to move somebody into a position where they feel confident enough to make the decision to leave or go. It's a significant piece of work. So her program also helps her clients to achieve quick and easy wins because each week they are given a piece of homework that they need to go and do, which then builds their confidence, their self-esteem, they get insight, they can see things from a new perspective, and then they can come back into the following session the week after, and she can have a conversation about them. Okay, what have you learned? What's going on? Um, what is it that you've done? How do you see things differently? Whatever the conversation needs to be. Those specific homework tasks are really important because they help the individual stay motivated to take action. They're constantly moving forward. They're constantly moving forward to achieve the outcome it is that you've promised them, basically, that they've invested their time, energy and money into working with you. What's really important is that she also holds people accountable. And I always say to my clients, um, always, everybody, that, you know, if you haven't done the homework, that's fine. Please don't cancel the session. Just turn up and we'll have a conversation about it. So I'm 100% there for my clients. She's 100% there for her clients because she holds them accountable in the decisions they're making along when she's working with them. So she's got their back every step of the way. It's also great for her because once you are focused on results, you have a very clear path that people are going to follow. It means that she's been able to increase her fees. So before she was working by the hour, now she's working and has increased her fees significantly to work with people over a longer pe period of time. 
Now, what's nice about that is not only has she like gone from an hourly fee to making just over 2,500 per client, but it also means that she gets time back because the program is repeatable. So she saves a ton, ton of time and a ton of energy. So she gets some of her life back, which is what she wanted. She wanted to be able to fall in love, back in love with the business. What's also about great about working this way towards results is that she'll instantly become more credible. People rave about her more. She'll get more referrals from the people it is that she has worked with. She knows exactly what her content is. She knows what to say about what. She knows where everybody is in the journey with her. That's worth it's, it. When you get to that point, it's worth its weight in gold, you know, to have time back, to be able to relax, to be able to go into each session and know that you're working towards this piece of work with an individual is worth its weight in gold. So how can you help your clients to achieve results? Well, you have to have a great promise. What are they going to achieve from working with you? What are the results going to be? You've got to be absolutely crystal clear on the journey, the steps that they're going to need to take to achieve it. Now, you don't need to give them the kitchen sink. You don't need to explain the intricacy of how you've made a decision for them to do this exercise. So I see this an awful, awful lot is that people give so much content, they over deliver and then someone just gets confused and they can't get it. What you want to do is give them the rawness of the exercise it is that they need to do as the homework, not the whole explanation as to why. <laughs> You've got to really um, carefully think about the process they need to go through. That's how you're going to help people to achieve results, quick wins. Those small quick wins are going to build up, build up, build up, build confidence, build self-esteem, have a new perspective. Um, they'll feel as if they're in momentum, changing, moving forward. It's how you get fantastic results. You absolutely need to add in accountability. Whether that accountability comes from you, yourself, or you have a head coach who is dealing with the accountability side of working with your clients. It's really important. The accountability, holding people accountable is critical to helping them to get results. Um, oh, something flashed into my brain then, but I've completely forgotten. I've completely forgotten. Ah, oh, that's what it is. The value often comes, I mean, ultimately what people are paying for is having a conversation with you to be led and to be guided to get the results it is they want the value is in the conversation with you if you don't hold people accountable through a conversation then they're going to be more likely not to succeed we all know we have all experienced uh enrolling for things there's been no accountability and we haven't done it i've got a couple of courses that i've bought i've never done because there's been no accountability because I haven't been able to have that conversation. To me, that's where the magic happens, that's where the magic happens with my clients. It's with not just the training and the coaching, but it's having that conversation, having their back, letting them know that I am there for them no matter what. That's an amazing value. That's how you help your clients to achieve results is breaking things down step by step by step. What do they need to do first before they can move on to the next step? Where are we heading? What's the result? You know, working backwards from that. But also making sure that you're not just doing this for one person, but you're doing it for a group of people. So you can move away from charging by the hour. You can move away from constantly over delivering overworking and you can get the program into something that is crystal clear that is repeatable 
So what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow is the second reason that uh, coaching programs fail, but results is definitely the one that hits the number one spot for me is because too many programs are wishy-washy. People don't know what they're buying and when people don't know what they're buying, they're not going to buy. So I, on the 20th, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, at the on the 20th, I am going to be running Essence. That is a five day deep dive immersion, which is completely free. And it's about creating highly profitable programs that deliver every time for clients. I'll pop the, um, I pop the details below. Hopefully my eyes haven't been jumping all over the place. And I have actually gone live because I didn't check. Oh, Karen, lovely. So Karen's just said, I love working with you, Wendy. More helpful than I thought it would be. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm going to have to take a screenshot. Shop. Shot. <laughs> yes, the pleasure was all mine, darling. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to be talking about the second reason that coaching programs fail. There's five altogether, so you can come back to these videos and watch them. But I'm going to stop rambling now because I think I uh, have covered everything that I wanted to cover. If you've got any questions, pop them below. And I'll also pop the link below for the deep dive immersion as well. Take care and I will see you guys tomorrow.